I'm Satine Phoenix, and this is Larry Hamilton, and you're watching us on Follow Me and Die. January 2014 was the 40th anniversary of the publication of the original Dungeons & Dragons. To celebrate, the D20 Dark Ages blog hosted a D&D 40th anniversary blog challenge for the 28 days of February 2014. I blogged my answers to those questions every day of February 2014. You can see the description below for a link to my blog articles. Since 2017 is my 40th anniversary of playing D&D, it was sometime in March or April 1977, I thought I'd do a video series, my D&D 40th anniversary video challenge, using those same questions from 2014. 2017 is also the 40th anniversary of the Holmes Basic Blue Box. The person who introduced me to D&D was my younger brother, Robert. He's about a year younger than I am. As I recall, um, I believe at that time he had a subscription to Isaac Asimov's science fiction magazine and had uh, a subscription to, um, I believe, a science fiction and fantasy book club. Um, way back then, there were lots of different book clubs you could get a subscription to. And we occasionally had comic books. So it was either in the back of a comic book, the Asimov magazine, or some flyer that came with one of the books he'd ordered. Uh, must have mentioned D&D, because uh, he's the one that uh, knew about it and uh, convinced me to buy it. I was the one that had money, because I mowed yards. Um, and so for the cost of mowing one yard, about an hour's worth of work, about $10, um, I bought the Holmes Basic Blue Box. This is what that looks like. Uh, this is not the original that I had. I gave my original to my youngest brother, uh, either when I went off to college or when I finally moved all my stuff out of the house after grad school. Um, and so he may still have that. I'm going to track that down and ask him. Um, but uh, the original basic was written by John Eric Holmes, a doctor, a physician. And he basically simplified and clarified the original rules, make it easier for people to figure it out. And it only went up to level three for characters. It had monsters of higher level and talked about different levels of the dungeon. It had a sample dungeon, some really fantastic art. Uh, the box included several other things. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what all was in there. Uh, my box was very flattened and uh, well-worn. Uh, but I'm going to have to dig into that some more. But uh, the cover with the dragon and the wizard and the warrior and the mountain of gold, to me, that is Dungeons & Dragons. When people say Dungeons & Dragons, I think of that image. Um, there's some iconic art by David Sutherland and uh, Dave Trampier, and uh, the pictures in there uh, are so evocative to me anyway of D&D &D, that I often get confused and think that the pictures in this booklet are in one of the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons books and so uh, I'd be looking for them and couldn't find them and then I bought this book I'm like oh that's why I can't find them I'm thinking of the wrong book. A uh, funny little anecdote of this particular book that I picked up a couple years ago uh, back in March at Gary Con 9 I went to uh, up to Tom Wom and asked him to sign because he did a picture in this and he didn't think he had until he saw it and realized oh I guess he did so that was a kind of a chuckle I guess they had him doing art for so many different things he didn't know what all his art was in when we played we had very deadly dungeons that were just full of traps and all kinds of craziness to begin with I don't remember my very first character we probably killed lots of characters the first character or the earliest character I have a copy of and remember playing uh, was uh, a fighter thief halfling, Cad Staglar. Uh, it was very Monty Hall. I think that was around 10th grade. You had different people take turns uh, being 
Game Master, and uh, that character ended up with a Girdle of Storm Giant Strength, Gauntlets of Ogre Power, a Ring of Regeneration, plus Magic Weapons. So with his great strength, instead of bothering to pick locks, he would just run through the bottoms of the doors in the dungeon. So not very realistic or uh, a wise thing to do. No checking for traps, but he never got killed off or anything. Uh, I do recall that uh, way back in the day, we had uh, some friends we made in ninth grade. So that would have been after uh, several of the AD&D books were out. And we would just have these expeditions and we'd take mules and uh, retainers down into the dungeon and wind our way through the dungeon with this long line. No possibility of still. It was, in hindsight, quite ridiculous. But that's the way we played it. Um, I also remember that we'd say certain words wrong because we didn't know better. Like we didn't know about the TV show Paladin because we weren't old enough to have that show and it was not in reruns in Kansas City. And so we called them Paladins. Uh, kind of makes me cringe now, but back then we didn't know any better. Uh, seems like there were some other terms that we misused and abused because we didn't know the right pronunciation. So we played with uh, the Holmes book for quite some time. Uh, later, when the Monster Manual came out, we added those to the mix. And then in uh, Christmas of 1978, my mother bought me the Player's Handbook. And this is my original Player's Handbook, and it's Beat Up Glory. Um, it's one of two books that survived a busted water pipe. Uh, Oh gosh, over 20 years, well, right about 20 years ago, that got rid of a lot of stuff, different story. Uh, but this book uh, uh, is obviously well worn. Uh, I took it to uh, Gamehole Con this past November and Gary Con this past March, and I got uh, signatures from Luke and Ernie Gygax, Jim Ward, uh, Tim Kask, and Mike Carr. And I'll see if I can add some others to that. And this is my table copy. I still play it. It's beat up, but um, my mom gave this to me, and uh, she hasn't been with us for a long time now. So uh, this means a lot to me, just sentimental value, and uh, I'll never get rid of this book. Uh, I think it's interesting that my 40th anniversary of Dungeons & Dragons is also the 40th anniversary of the publication of this booklet, which... Uh, there was recently a Kickstarter to expand the three levels of Holmes Basic to up to 20 levels. Uh, and they call that Blue Holm. Uh, and I backed that and I'm curious to get the final product. The PDF was released upon uh, pledging and the uh, final artwork and the printed version should be out soon. So that was my introduction to D&D. You can read my article from 2014 and see how close my recollection is. Obviously, it's a little different because this is a personal anniversary of playing D&D &D plus the anniversary of Holmes Blue Box. Uh, so I look forward to uh, continuing this series uh, over the next month. I hope to do one of these a day. I would be curious to hear uh, your recollections of your beginnings with D&D and would uh, I'm not challenging anyone. This is just a personal challenge for me as a way of commemorating my 40th anniversary of playing D&D. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends, and please comment below. We can share in the conversation together. Tell me about your introduction to D&D and your answers to these challenge questions, if you will. You can find me online at my blog, followmeanddie.com. G+, Twitter, and Facebook. I have a Cafe Press store where you can buy t-shirts and hoodies with the Follow Me and Die logo by none other than Satine Phoenix. And just remember, with all of my sites, you don't have a choice because it's Follow Me and Die.